Hi, welcome to Sweet Valley Diaries. I am your host, Marissa Flaxbart, and this week we are biding our time while we wait for a possible ghost situation for book number 29, Bitter Rivals, to kind of clear up. And since the opportunity presented itself, I thought we could take this week to do something that I've been meaning to do for a long time, which is to catch up on a little bit of listener mail. You may notice that I have a chest cold, which is exciting for you because Marissa with a chest cold voice is the sexiest voice that I have. So get cozy, maybe uh, draw a bath, bubbles, have a glass of wine, light a candle, and then listen to some letters that people wrote me about Sweet Valley High novels. Recently, I heard from Angie. Here's what she writes. I read some of the Sweet Valley High books back in the early mid-90s as a middle schooler. I mostly remember the Twins spin-off, which I preferred because in those, Jessica didn't seem like quite as much of a heinous bitch, just more of a brat, which I could tolerate even though I'm totally an Elizabeth. I got most of those books from the library, so I wasn't able to reread them obsessively the way I did with my Babysitter's Club books that I owned. I did own the Twins number 43, Elizabeth's First Kiss. Spoiler alert, it was with Todd. And I read that one repeatedly enough that I can even remember some of the outfit descriptions. For whatever reason, I also owned three of the first four super editions. The bike trip, the spring break trip to France, the au pairs in Malibu. Fun memory about the first bike trip book, which also answers your question about whether bike trips are a thing. Angie is talking here about the very first uh, Sweet Valley super edition, which is called Perfect Summer. When I was reading this book, my dad saw the cover with the bicycle and asked what it was about. I told him they were on a bike trip, which then prompted him to get out a bunch of slides, not pictures, like actual slides with a projector and everything, and show me and my mom and my sister all of these slides from bike trips that he took during high school, the late 60s, and college, early 70s, across the U.S. and Europe. I don't think it was as glamorous as the Sweet Valley trip, as it was mostly skinny, nerdy, sweaty dudes in the pictures. I remember asking if anyone got attacked by a bear, and he said no, but they did get food poisoning in Luxembourg, which was especially unpleasant. So yes, bike trips used to be a thing, and my dad has the slides to prove it. Thank you so much, Angie, for clearing that up. And if only uh, Chrome Dome's poor nephew had gotten food poisoning instead of chased by a bear, I think he would be living the rest of his life much less traumatized. But then again, it's Sweet Valley. And as we know, say it with me, everybody, there's no trauma in Sweet Valley. I also heard from Casey, who uh, sent me the most amazing, uh, first ever for me, uh, fan-produced content, some bingo cards that I will post on our Instagram page, at Sweet Valley Diaries on Instagram, uh, that you can play along listening uh, to see if we all get a bingo on any episode of Sweet Valley Diaries. So touching and exciting to get something like that. Casey also writes this. I read specifically the Sweet Valley Twins books in elementary school and can remember a couple of them very vividly. As I got older, I was more of a fantasy sci-fi girl, but I dabbled in the High series. I definitely owned the Wakefields of Sweet Valley book, which goes through their mother's family tree, including eerily similar sets of twins. Oh my God, Casey, I am so excited to get to those books. I have uh, the Wakefields of Sweet Valley, the Patmans of Sweet Valley, the Fowlers of Sweet Valley, all just like burning a hole in my bookshelf. They are the most beautiful, like big, thick books with the most ridiculous drawings on the cover of what like historical Wakefields and Fowlers and Patmans look like. Uh, Gladiators, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google Patmans of Sweet Valley or Wakefields of Sweet Valley and get really excited. I will have to find the time at some point to uh, not only read, but a podcast about those. But I think it'll probably be pretty far in the future as our mandate seems to be going in chronological order. And those books came a little bit later in the whole uh, Sweet Valley timeline as far as books being published goes. So I'm going to post Casey's bingo cards on Instagram at Sweet Valley Diaries, and I'll put them on the website too. The website, sweetvalleydiaries.net, which I wouldn't blame you for not having already looked at. It is the year 2019, and for a lot of us, uh, the website for a podcast is not the first place we go to get our podcast content. But in the case of Sweet Valley Diaries, the website is the birthplace of the whole the whole endeavor. 
um, as I have said many times on the podcast. Okay, next I have a letter from Monica, who wrote a while back. And uh, Monica uh, wrote after the wonderful, seminal uh, episode of Sweet Valley Diaries about the book Hostage, which featured our friends uh, Jack and Tanner from the Babysitter's Club Club podcast. Monica writes, I've been wanting to write for a while, but didn't have anything to say besides how much I enjoy your podcast. Hey, gladiators, feel free um, to write in just to say that you enjoy the podcast. That's all I'll say about that. Returning to Monica. All that changed. Oh, I just got a text message. Hold on. So do not disturb. I've been wanting to write for a while, but didn't have anything to say besides how much I enjoy your podcast. But all that changed with yesterday's episode. Then we have a numbered list. One, I totally agree that Gladiators is the best nickname for your listeners. Excellent. Two, discussing the Sweet Valley High Guys as snacks or dishes was amazing. The two guest hosts were super funny. Aw, that's Jack and Tanner. Good job, guys. And I think that snacks and dishes, I had to explain to my dad uh, what that meant. So he actually specifically told me that there was a, an element of that episode that he did not understand slang-wise. And uh, that was what he was talking about. So imagine that uh, phone conversation. I bet you can. You all have parents, too. Number three, you can totally get your very own Sweet Valley High portrait done by James Matthews. I found out about this gem because comedian Kara Clank got hers done for her comedy album. Here's James's website. Uh, the link is uh, jimmyart.com. I desperately want to get mine done, but haven't been able to justify the $200 commission fee. Oh, my God. So when I got this email from Monica, I should say I forwarded it on to Jack and Tanner because we had discussed uh, how amazing the art was on the episode and the idea of being able to pay only $200 to get it done seemed crazy. I don't know. That can't be right, right? It can't be only $200. I see a uh, a Kickstarter in my future. <laughs> anyway, I love your podcast. I was a huge Sweet Valley High fan back in my late elementary and junior high years. That sounds like before 12 years old, Monica. I recently began reading the series in order, and although there are a lot of cringy stories, it's still enjoyable. Can't wait until you cover the super thrillers. Me neither. P.S. I'm an Elizabeth, but I secretly wish I was more of a Jessica. She has so much more fun. Thanks for the show, Monica. I mean, they say Jessicas have more fun, but I don't know if I really buy it. I have mentioned many times on the show that Sweet Valley Twins was the series that I read as a girl, and you may have noticed that some of our letter writers wrote in to say the same thing. At the back of every Sweet Valley High book, there are some pages that advertise future books that are coming out, either from the publisher Bantam or maybe just telling you to try out some other Sweet Valley High novels. But um, in a recent book, it was published in 1986, and there in the back was the first ever advertisement for the Sweet Valley Twins series. I posted an image of that advertisement on my Instagram page recently and got a lot of responses uh, in the comments, which is one of the fun reasons about joining in in the Instagram community. One user wrote, truth telling time, I ditched the twins to jump on the Sweet Valley High train at age 11. I was a very jaded tween. Another user wrote, this is the series I started on in fourth grade circa 1987. Number four, Choosing Sides was the first one I got and a reading addiction was born. They are now all on my classroom library shelves. As long as we're talking Instagram, there is one more piece of information that I would like to share with you all. It's a hot tip from a user named Blood, Sweat, and Silks, who writes, My sister and I grew up with these and still quote them. Have you ever heard the audiobooks with actors? They are so great. And I was surprised and delighted, but wondered where on earth uh, such a thing might be available. Enter the internet. So uh, let's just go to YouTube here. Um, Sweet Valley High audiobooks. And uh, how about we take a little listen together? Oh, my God. Welcome to Sweet Valley High, 
where you'll meet identical twins Elizabeth and Jessica Wakefield. Both girls are blessed with spectacular good looks. I'm having an out-of-body experience. Exactly the same size clothes, but they refuse to dress alike. That's not even true. It is easy to tell them apart, but beneath the skin, there is a world of difference. Uh, a gleam of mischief lurks in the depths of Jessica's eyes, while Elizabeth's reflects only sincerity. <laughs> only sincerity. Jessica Wakefield groaned as she stepped in front of her sister Elizabeth and stared at herself in the bedroom mirror. This is scary. Oh, Lizzie, do you believe how absolutely horrendous I look today? Oh, how can I possibly go to school looking so awful today of all days? If you think you're the grossest looking person in Sweet Valley, just what does that make me? Miss America? Jessica? Elizabeth? Jessica, of course. Who's this? Oh, hi, Jessica. This is Todd Wilkins. Is uh, Liz home? Oh, Todd, I'm so glad you called. I've been meaning to tell you what an absolutely fantastic jump shot you made in practice yesterday. Oh my god, I, I wish really I could be impressed. doing witty commentary right now, but I just can't tear my ears or my brain away, okay? Anyway, I'll put a link to that on the, on the, in the show notes. Uh, I don't know what to do with this information. I don't know if I'm more excited or frightened Oh, this is this is a big moment, you all. Thank you, blood, sweat, and silks. Okay, so here's the plan. Next week, we're going to try and re-record the episode for book number 29, Bitter Rivals. And God willing, and um, the dead don't rise in the form of ghosts, we will have that episode for you next Thursday. In the meantime, uh, why not join in on the conversation? Send me an email at sweetvalleydiaries at me.com. Visit the website, sweetvalleydiaries.net. Peruse to your heart's content, my younger selves take on all of the books that we've read thus far and every book up through book 50, uh, not including super editions, but yes, including the thrillers. Follow the show on Instagram at Sweet Valley Diaries, or on Twitter, at Sweet Valley. And you know, as long as we're talking about the website, why don't I take advantage of my current sexy chest cold voice situation and close up today with a reading of younger Marissa's thoughts on book number 29, Bitter Rivals, circa over 10 years ago. For such a smart girl, Elizabeth Wakefield can sure be stupid sometimes. Like, totally socially inept stupid. Like, no backbone stupid. I know, Elizabeth is famous for being friends with everyone, but in this story, she's such good friends with Amy Sutton that she doesn't realize that Amy Sutton is a bitch. Amy Sutton is Jessica. Okay, okay, besides Jessica, who exactly is this Amy Sutton? Well, she and Elizabeth were best friends in grade school before Enid was in the picture and kept in touch for a while after Amy's mother, who is somehow 1986's only female sportscaster, took the whole family to the East Coast. Now that Amy's mother is being transferred back to Sweet Valley, the two girls assume that they'll be best friends again. Liz is only slightly concerned that Amy and Enid won't get along. Amy isn't concerned at all because she's not interested in sharing her best friendship with anyone. As I mentioned before... She's a bitch. Once again, we're talking about a book that I really didn't want to read. It's a given that Elizabeth and Enid were always going to be best friends, so why even bother wasting 138 pages on the rivalry between Enid and some girl we've never heard of over Elizabeth's friendship? And yet again, I was wrong to prejudge this story. Sure, it's pointless, but in the same way that most things that are total crises in high school are actually not worth sweating over. It was a page turner, most of which I read in one sitting. What fascinated me page after page was how every character was screwing herself through misapprehensions about the other. Enid assumes that she needs to hide her dislike of Amy from Elizabeth, lest she hurt Elizabeth's feelings. Elizabeth assumes that Enid and Amy are the same kind of friend to her, namely, a good one, and that they're both genuinely interested in becoming friends with one another. And Amy, like Jessica, assumes that Elizabeth will drop Enid now that she's in town as Enid is famously boring. What happens instead is that Elizabeth learns an important lesson about friendship and about herself. Isn't that sweet? 
Amy is instantly popular, aided by her beauty and fashion sense, and becomes fast friends with Lila Fowler, Kara Walker, and all the other glitterati of Sweet Valley High. She even tries out for cheerleading and makes the cut without attempting suicide. All of this isn't enough to convince Liz that she and Amy have grown into two very different people. But after several weeks of missed lunch dates, canceled ski trips, and delayed plans, Liz feels like her good-natured loyalty is being taken advantage of, and realizes that she's been doing the same thing to Enid since Amy came to town. Let's save the rest for next week. Until then, gladiators. Goodbye. I think she's in the shower. Maybe I should call back in a few minutes. Better not. We're rushing to school. This is the day they're announcing the Phi Beta pledges. Liz and I will just die if we don't get in. I'm sure you won't have any trouble, but uh, good luck anyway. Who was that? Oh, just Todd Wilkins. He called to wish me good luck with Phi Beta today. Wasn't that sweet of him? Elizabeth's heart sank, (gasps) but she didn't let Jessica see her disappointment. She had been hoping Todd would call her since the other day when she'd caught him glancing at her in the cafeteria line. It's like the last unicorn. After school that day, Elizabeth had hoped her new outfit would impress Todd when she saw him, but suddenly it didn't seem to matter. And nothing would spoil this day for her sister. For Elizabeth, the day was already spoiled, but she was determined to keep her feelings to herself. It was obvious which sister Todd preferred, and why not? What girl could possibly compete with the dazzling Jessica Wakefield?